ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shop Talk. I am your co-host, Andresi. Right over here is the Sour Patch Princess herself. It's Melba. How are you doing, Melba? I am doing great, Andre. I had a wild day at the gym today. It was odd and fun and satisfying. I had a nice leg day. I crushed that shit. I'm still having some issues with the shoulder. It's kind of a sore after my back day. But I got a compliment on my shoulders today. There you go. I was pretty happy about that. And the boy who gave me the compliment was pretty cute. Made me there happy. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Just working, watching too much wrestling, but I'm not working. So sleep, sleep has been less. Than, sleep has been less than lately because I'm trying to keep up on watching all the G1. Mm-hmm. Trying to watch the past weekend Stardom shows. There was a Mari Gold show this morning, uh, which so had much. the Britain Star Championship tournament semifinal and finals on it, which we will have to do a show about. Person. There's so yes. much news just coming out of Japanese wrestling right now that we're, I'm trying to prep for Friday for the Japanese wrestling update. I've got uh, Comic-Con stuff to talk about tomorrow on uh, Marvel Talk, along with trying to record another show with you tomorrow just to keep up with all the stuff, everything that's happening. So it's good. Yeah. It's busy. I've been busy. I've been busy. Yeah. I mean, the G1... Is always a busy, busy time for us. Any of these big major tournaments for NJPW especially are just a little, they're yeah. a bit much. But then to correlate with all the craziness and kookiness that's happening with Stardom, happening with Mari Gold, happening in other wrestling, it's just like, wow, there's a well, lot yet, going on. We're not going to be covering here, but you get N1 starting at the start of August. Which is mm-hmm. Noah's certain Noah's G1, the version of the mm-hmm. G1 there, the N1 victory. And then you have the five star Grand Prix starting on the 10th. So, and mm-hmm. that's going to run for concurrently for eight days in, in that eight day span with uh, the G1 and the N1. And then right mm-hmm. after the Stardom Grand Prix is the five star Grand Prix is done, then we've got uh, the Mari Gold, uh, their, their tournament starting. So, crazy it, cupcakes. It's never going to stop, is it? <laughs> and then after the, and after the Mari Gold tournament, we're getting to October. Then we get into November, where we get ta- World Tag League starting with the Super Junior Tag League. And then, then it's then it's Wrestle Kingdom and and all the big show, end of the year shows and start of the year shows. And then we get to the New Japan Cup. God damn it, Andre! It's only halfway through the year. You're telling me how the rest of it is going to go. Uh, the Japan, the Japan likes tournaments, man. It's, it's, yeah. You know, I mean, look at what we're getting out of these tournaments. I mean, not to go too far off topic three minutes into a Chop Talk video, but, like, look what the G1 has given us. Yeah. Like, some, this uh, eclectic mix of a bunch of different companies just coming together and just having freaking banger matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the fact that you Mirror is one of my top performers of the tournament, and I've been shitting on that guy for the last since he came back. Uh yeah, so it's been interesting. It has been very interesting. We should probably talk about the wrestling that we're here to talk about, Dale. Yeah, but what was interesting, we were at the LPW this past Friday night as we mm. uh entered the Rec Room South comment. But before we talk about that, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here, please. Uh, please, we really do appreciate all the great support you have given us. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Please share us with all your friends, family, and just lonely people wandering through the world. And don't forget to uh, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted, alerted every time we drop a new video. And ding dong. I'm alone. I can't hear it. <laughs> Pretty sure you just did. <laughs> Admit that you could hear it. <laughs> I said I'm alone. I can't hear it. I'm sure, I'm wandering. sure. I'm wandering alone. I can't hear it. Dissociate. Dissociate in the basement. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> Why are we in a basement? Because you're in your basement. Oh, yeah, I am in a basement. <laughs> Bruh. Oh, man. I'm tired. I, I I should get some sleep tonight, but I want I got I got more G one to watch, and I want to start watching other stuff. So nah, I probably won't go to bed for another four or five hours. <laughs> get up and like. Well, let's get this episode out quicky dicky then.
Yeah, we're going to talk some LPW 28 Feeling Hella Good uh, featuring Ky- Smiley Kylie Ray. Yes. So cute. Yeah, her like I know Astrid's this and Kylie's is like w- like way more of an angle. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Shaz McKenzie is is the more yeah. level. Like 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 hers is around her chin more. Like it's like yeah, very much more like Astrid's. Yeah, it's a little hers is a little more kicked up. Like Astrid's like this, and then hers is like yeah, more like it's, it's more like a resting thing or like resting. Thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we kick we kick this show off with a scramble match for the LBW Scramble Championship. It is Eli Surge, Beef Boy, Elliot Tyler, Rich King, Sheik Shabazz, and the champion T. Why Jackson? Uh they put tinfoil hat on Sheik and everyone beats beats up Sheik. Uh Elliot Tyler and Rich have a little face off and he goes, Elliot says to Rich, you work out, but your hands are soft. <laughs> uh, I mean doesn't Rich does Rich wear gloves? I've never seen him wear gloves when we worked out, or but he's training me more. But I don't know. I haven't seen it in, his, in his videos. He doesn't look like he wears gloves. So maybe just maybe he's a good moisturizer. Maybe it. That's that's a hell of a talent because I haven't been using gloves for the last week and I'm already getting mm. man hands. I wear gloves every day and my hands are all cracked and dry. That's more because of my job. <laughs> I was going to say, you're probably wearing leather gloves or suede gloves, aren't you? Uh, you're like cut-resistant gloves, so they have like like le- rubber in them and stuff. So yeah, uh, just yeah, dries that'll, do her. that'll do it. Uh, roll- that top tans. So Beef Boy gets a rolling elbow and their slingshot, and then Eli hits a slingshot spear. They both try to pin T.Y. in different positions multiple times, with the dude just going, no, this is no, both of you are not winning this title together. I've only got a few uh, stuff for this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sheik getting everyone in the corners and just doing those flying uppercuts into every corner. Yes. He One of my into... favorite things that he does. Yeah, Eli ends up getting a, uh, hits a kamikaze or he hits a kamikaze to Eli and then a follow slam that he like went back and then came back up on and he did the follow slam and they get bridges mm-hmm. back up out of the follow slam slam. Like, insane. Uh, mm-hmm. He hit that to T.Y. and then he hits a spine buster to Rich. Um, yeah. Uh, that was a Beef wicked spine buster, too. Yeah. Beef Boy ends up getting a power on the T.Y. off the top. Then Rich hops up to the top. And X factors Eli to the down to the mat. And then Sheik hits a code breaker off the top to Beef Boy. Just craziness. The end of this match comes. Sheik hits the Razor's Edge, or as I like to call it, the Camel Toss to T.Y. Jackson. And, get, and gets Rich up. But he gets down, he gets Rich up for an Olympic slam, but Rich gets down and hits his own Olympic slam. But Eli dives uh, uh, on the uh, pin to break it up. And Eli picks up Rich, hits him with the swinging flatliner to get the one, the two, and the three. The scramble championship is just another conspiracy. <laughs> Ah, uh, it was such a nice story that they have kind of played up and come to, I think, not a conclusion, but like a new chapter of it with Eli chasing that scramble title and then finally achieving it. Mm. Mm. We saw a celebration also of the animal world come out. We got Beefy, we got Goosey, we got Wolf Boy. And we began the discussion at the table of, so does Eli believe Goose is real? No. He he thinks Goose is a robot. I think we believe that Goose is unreal, though. Yeah, he's a robot. He's unreal. <laughs> he's a robot. <laughs> no. Poor Goosey. Yeah, this was a really fun match. As I always say, um, these scramble matches are usually my favorite matches on the show for LPW. Um this was a great one to start off with, too, because, as you mentioned, there was so much going on in this match. But it's like a glorious organized chaos where everybody just knows where they're supposed to be. And they're there for a good reason. Like, hmm. it's there that there's no one sitting there watching, waiting no. for near falls to happen and stuff like that. It's very, very well organized. Very, very experienced wrestlers. Um yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. You kind of got all the big stuff that I do remember. Yeah. So we move on. Second match of the show. It is 
Riley Cruz and Sharon Rogers versus the Zoo World Order of uh, Oh and uh Wolf Boy and Kalashaw did come out to celebrate with Eli with Eli after his win. That's yeah. what I said with the zoo celebration. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean I must my brain is not working. I'm sorry. You uh, we're in the conversation, my guy. <laughs> that's how that's how much my brain is not working right now. Dear, we're gonna hope we can make it through this thing. Yeah, Riley yeah. Cruz and Jared Rogers taking on the new world order of get the Canadian Gears Kyle Shaw, the brand new cl uh, clandestine champion. Uh, mm -hmm. your champion, your champion, champion of salvation. salvation. Yeah, 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 your champion of salvation and his tag team partner, Wolf Boy Will Mantla. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. Um, our boy Nathan gave me full notes for Thursday night, and I don't have them. I couldn't find them. I couldn't find the notes online because he shared it to me in a Google Doc, and I couldn't find it. So I didn't have notes for the Thursday for Kyle Shaw. Bruh. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot, bro. I forgot, I forgot to grab them. I forgot to grab them. Was searching for them before the show, and I couldn't find them. And I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> so we get into this match. Uh, Goose with get very just lots of arm drags to Riley Cruz, and then gets that cartwheel into the into a drop kick. And he's he's got it's not like he's doing just an arm drag. It's an arm drag one way, a, a Japanese arm drag. He's got all different kinds of art ways he's doing the arm drag. It's great. Mm -hmm. it. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wolf Boy gets uh, with a backdrop into the springboard drop kick to Jared Rogers for two. Uh, follow a slam to Wolf Boy. Uh, Oh, and Riley Cruz does a, does a somersault kip up, goes to up to the top, hits the encore moonsault to Wolf Boy, but he only gets two. Uh, later in the match, uh, Goose gets bionic wings to Cruz and Rogers, and, and then sends Cruz into Rogers and Lariat Rogers, who DDTs Cruz. The end of this match comes. Wolf Boy hits the six one nine to Cruz, and then Goose Boy and Rogers hit the super kick Page Turner combo to Cruz for the win. You said Goose Boy, and it threw me off. Yeah, <laughs> I love Boy. it. I love it. We're Goose Boy now. Uh, We're Goose Goose Boy now. They're, they're Team Goose Boy now. Um, yep. Always such a privilege and treat to see Wolf Boy and. Goose. These guys are just so charismatic and get the crowd going. I think I've said it every single time I see these guys wrestle. And it's just something that Clandestine does very, very right. They do do a lot of great character work and development with their trainees and get these amazing characters with great crowd interactions. They really do know how to work a crowd for the most part. Um, Riley Cruz was one I wanted to kind of focus on on this one, though, because I think we've seen him one time that I recall before um, in LPW. Um, I believe it was in a scramble match, if I'm not mistaken, or another mixed tag. I'm not entirely sure, but I remember he wasn't, there was something off with the character that I wasn't completely enraptured with. Mm. I don't know what the fizzy, I think he's been in Prairie Pro. Um, he's in, or at least in Prairie Pro Wrestling with our good friend, Mr. Money Munson. Um, and holy heck and crap, this is almost not, this is not the same person that we reviewed before. The mm. slight character flares that he puts on his character being that metal head where he's, he's not just feeding you a lariat. He's doing a head bang, then feeding you a lariat. Like he has his own style that has really evolved from the last time that I saw him to now. Maybe it was just a nervous thing or in a new venue. I don't know. But it was a completely different character that I felt I could actually get behind a lot more this time than the first time that I saw him. And I felt that him and Rogers actually worked together really, really well. Um, I don't recall seeing them tag before. They may have interacted before. I don't really know. This is a third partner I've seen with Jared Rogers. So, third time's the charm. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't even get to see his other partner at RCW because he missed the match. I know. Well, I wasn't even referring to like RCW. I'm saying in, in LPW because remember, he started with Son of Irish. Yep. And then he's also teamed with Michael Aller and Richard Clark. This will be the third person within LPW, not even including the Alex. You know, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I would love to see the Alex, but 
We can't have the Alex all settle for Riley Cruz. These two teamed up very, very well together. I was very mm -hmm. impressed with the cohesion that uh, that they had there. Of course, Wolf Boy and Goose, they always work so, so well together. I enjoy watching their team. I always forget to bring out the Noisemaker. I yeah, still I have mine. the Noisemaker I... from the last show. Me too. Two it shows is... ago. Mine, mine's sitting at mine's just sitting on my bedside table. <laughs> yeah, the little boodly doodly thing is off now. It's just oh, yeah. a Wah. Yeah, mine too. Mine too. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay, yeah, good. I, I really thought good match. This match. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. We move on to a sing a singles contest. It was supposed to be Reed Matthews versus Travis Williams, but a couple days before the show, uh, Travis Williams was uh, had a scheduling conflict with uh, TNA, so he mm -hmm. is uh, replaced by BC wrestler, BC trained wrestler Casey Ferreira from from. The Lions Gate Dojo, same place Travis Williams comes out of. And boy, howdy. This kid is hasn't even been wrestling two full years. I, I looked him up. October of 2022. Casey Fierre started or Casey Ferrer started in this business. Wow. At least had his first professional match. He's probably been training longer than that, obviously. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this kid Oof. is so good. I don't remember Shh. him. This was his return. I don't remember seeing him before. It might have been one of the shows that I missed. Uh, but a year, so, so in 2022, or maybe I'm not sure. I could actually look that up because he. I don't recall seeing him, so it hasn't been in the last year. So yeah, I, one I, show. Uh, yeah, I don't. Oh, there it is. Uh, August of 20. 23. You're at that show. About that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was him and J it was Jackie Lee and Sharif Morrow versus Casey Ferrara and Levi Knight. Uh, reloaded. Uh, I, I remember the show. I just don't remember him. I apologize. I was going to say, I do remember Levi Knight. He's been making quite a, a splash in the, the southern part of Alberta with um... Can't Yeah. So this match was insane. Like <laughs> it just did not stop. Uh, they 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 do this spot where they go to the outside. Uh, Casey ends up sending thickness uh, out on Arana. Does a tope suicida, but just about overshoots him. But he just like catches thick. But he ends up, but thick ends up catching him, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he then slams him onto the chairs. Just. Just crazy. It's just these two move so well. The, that cannonball by thickness in this match. Just, just ah, absolutely tremendous. Was this the match where he ended up like smashing his back on the chair like um, Julia? Ye Remember with Suri no, wasn't that? Wasn't and that? Uh, I thought that was in the next match. I'm looking through oh, okay. my notes right now. It might be in that. Yeah. Again, he there's a beautiful satellite DDT that Mel yelled out when he hit it. Oh, like he's very hit. So I good. earned that gold star, damn it. Oh, it was so good. Such a beautiful just these two. They're the chopping back and forth with these two. Mm. Like Casey Fra, like thickness's chops are some of the worst. Like, no, like and worst, I mean worst by the worst to take because he just take. so powerful. His chops are amazing. Good. But I wouldn't. Uh, just it seems like these are the worst one to take because it would just destroy your chest. And but Case Ferrick just firing back, man. He he mm -hmm. he was fighting back, man. Uh, Thickness gets a like, beautiful seismic toss at one point, but only gets two. Mm -hmm. um, Casey gets a Rana to Thickness off the top rope. Uh, Thickness catches him in the corner, hits like Samoa Joe Uranagi out of the corner. Uh, yeah. Goes to the top, gets cut off. Casey's trying the superplex. The thickness sends him down to the mat. Casey back up. Thickness fights back and hits a super blue thunder bomb off the top. It was crazy. Uh, Balance was insane. Uh, Casey hits a, a roundhouse kick, but thickness comes back with like a jumping in Zaguri. They're both down. They get back up. They're brawling. They're beating the piss at each other. And we hear a bell. This was a 20 minute time limit on this match. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I want Mar. This was <laughs> so good. I want Casey Fierre, or Ferreira here more. I think this kid yes. is amazing. And Thickness just always entertains, man. Always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the heaviest hitters that LPW has 
in the thickness read Matthews, those chops, they're thud. They're, those chops are the kind of chops that you take and it sounds like your chest is hollow. He hit you that hard. Mm. Um, did you mention the cannonball? There's also cannonball. Oh, yeah. By, by thickness, which is one of my favorite moves. I don't know why. I'm, I'm one of those people who's very amused by the simple yet effective moves and the, the double stomps, certain double stomps, the crossbodies, the cannonballs, they're just, oh, especially when they're done so perfectly. Um, but yeah, this Casey Ferreira wouldn't go the frick down. Thickness was hitting him hard and he it was almost like it was just firing him up more. He was almost undefeatable. Um, I absolutely agree with you. I would love to see him back here again. I'd love to see him take on other members of the locker room, see if he can keep up with them as well. Yeah, I, I again, I'd love to see him, like, just challenge Mars, Mars Blaze, uh, get him in a <laughs> scramble. Like, dude. Like, yeah, oh, God, a scramble would be insane with this kid. 100%. See if he's got a tag team partner. Maybe he can take the titles off, take the titles, like, Damn, this kid is so good. I want to see him more and more and more. I, I honestly, mm -hmm. I'd like to see him and Zoe go one on one. I think that would be a really Ooh, that good, would be match. good too. Yeah, yeah. I again, I good. I loved watching this kid, and I'm I'm going to pay attention to this kid mm -hmm. and where he goes because he's so hundred percent. We move on to the LPW Challenge Championship. It is Michael Richard Blaze versus. T recent DNA signee Judas Icarus. He, oh. Is he the sinner or is he the saint? That is the question. I thought Travis was the saint. But is he? Whoa, whoa, whoa. what happened? Ghosts? My my neighbor's pit bull just started going and she she's a sweet dog, but when she barks, she does not sound so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, it at least I know she's awake. Icarus hitting this running knee to the midsection of Blaze just looked just oh, yeah. like he like looked almost as painful as a Hanari liver shot. Oh, looked great. <laughs> just the strikes these two traded throughout the match were just insane. Uh, this is a spot where they end up brawling on the floor. Blaze gets Judas up. He tosses him into the post. Then he picks him up and suplexes him onto the chairs. And he like is where he lands on like the the chair so awkwardly and i'm just like oh he then yeah. hits a blaze then hits a topi so he was seated to judas on the floor it was crazy mm -hmm. uh judas gets like a this sick looking pump kick but blaze comes up with a spine buster They're just going back and forth uh airplane towards airplane spin torture rack bomb by blaze for two um just icarus gets to, like tossed in the corner but bounces out and hits this huge spear, just almost huge. taking Blaze out of his boots. It was just crazy. Uh, Blaze stops the rebound. Larry, they're trading strikes. Blaze hits uh, hits a knee, but Icarus gets a Rana into the roll up uh, to stop the final consecration. Uh, huge rebound, Larry, by Icarus. Like, she, like him and him and Travis love that rebound. Larry, they run into the ropes and bounce back. They love that. I mean, I do too. <laughs> It's a yeah. different look and it's a different, it adds a level of aggression to people because you don't see like faces typically doing that. Although I don't know if Judas Icarus is a face or, or not, but that being said, like Gabe Kitt, like he's not doing it because he's like patty cake, patty cake. Like he's doing it as a show of, a, of aggression, intimidation, not just to the opponent, but to the audience. I dig it because it's an, another level of character work. And they go into the second rope for it, like chest first, mm. and then bounce it. It's okay because that Gabe kid goes into the onto the top rope chest first. He's also very tall, though. Gabe. Oh, Oh, a hundred percent. So, <laughs> uh, he goes for another lariat, but uh, Blaze sends Ben into it, but Ben ducks the lariat, and mm -hmm. again he gets tossed into Icarus. Icarus hops over Ben, but Blaze says he's coming down. Hits a low blow with Ben's back turn, picks him up. Final consecration. To those toasted bagels for the win. I hope other people know what that means. I have no idea what that means. It's the old name for final consecration. The toasted bagel. I just mm -hmm. wish I knew. 
it's what it is. It's, that's what it's it funny names. That's like like some Zack Saber Junior level. That's from like Korean. I love it. That's good. That's from like way, 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 way back, back. in the day. I remember he remember him using back that back when like we oh. walked up the hill both ways on the way to and from school. Okay. Um yeah, I don't have a whole ton to add. I mean, I this match was great. I really, really enjoyed this. I had a lot of anxiety watching it though, of course, as I do when I watch shoeless wrestlers. But like, not gonna lie, like I don't I saw this guy walk through beer. Because someone spilt their beer in the front row there for one of those dope bays. And I, I, I saw him walk through it and everything. That man's feet are spotless. Like, maybe it's not the, the case. I don't know. But from where I was sitting, his feet looked really clean. It was... Yeah. I was talking with Kat about it after. And I was like, I feel like those wrestlers are just the kind of wrestlers who really know how to self-care and take care of themselves. So... Because hmm. having a pedicure after that, walking through Lord knows what, I would assume you would have to take care of that. Otherwise, you might get sick. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Maybe I should feel less anxiety about it. I just worry that becomes more of a liability than anything and just an easier target for people to kind of um, capitalize on you. We've seen that many, many a time. And um, this one, not not a thing, though. I was actually very, very impressed. Um, you know how I feel about ball shots. I hate them. But uh, when they're done in a creative manner, I can appreciate the struggle. So the way they set this up was actually pretty brilliant. And mm. the way that Ben was distracted so perfectly, it, it worked out very, very well in their favor for how this this looked. It looked really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have a whole lot to add to this one. Yeah. Again, I thought I again thought this was incredible. Those two matches were just fire. Like this whole mm -hmm. show, there wasn't anything disappointing on this show. Everything delivered. Mm -hmm. The show delivered, and just things were just so much fire on this show. Can we mm -hmm. move on. We came back from intermission to Zoe Sager versus Smiley Kylie Ray. Um, yeah. Kylie high five me and Nathan reaching out from the ring over yeah. over the glass. She high fived us both. We were both just like cheering for her so loudly. Mm -hmm. She was awesome. Uh, just mm -hmm. great wrestling with these two. Uh, Zoe ends up like catching a kick to her and like swings the leg down. Kylie kind of like bends over and Zoe just knees her in the face, like up knees her in the face. Oh yeah, so that looks quick. so good. Uh, there's a standing mm -hmm. rings of Saturn by Kylie Ray. Uh, uh, and then gets Zoe onto her, and then transitions her, Zoe onto her back, just stretching her over her back. I didn't mm -hmm. even know what that was called, but it was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Zoe gets an everything is Zoe for two, uh, mm -hmm. which is which is everything is evil. Um, just absolutely incredible match. Uh, Kylie hits a super kick, and Zoe comes back with her like flip scorpion kick, where she like flips under her hands and like mm -hmm. kicks somebody with a with a heel kick. Uh, mm -hmm. and then they drop, and then they both just hit forearms at the same time and drop each other. These mm -hmm. two were just so good, man. Like, just they they flowed so well together. Uh, Kylie gets a TKO for two at one point. Uh, Kylie misses the end security. Zoe gets a bridging German, but Kylie kicks out at the last possible millisecond. Um, Zoe gets Kylie up, but Kylie gets a victory roll for two. Zoe hits the stunner. Then she follows it up with the Z Factor for the win. Absolutely incredible match. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about the post match in a minute. But yeah, I, I, th mm -hmm. I thought this match was awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And what was interesting is this shift in dynamic that we've kind of seen with uh, Zoe Sager. Going from the that heel to uh, face, very over with the crowd. Crowd was very, very behind her. It was odd to see Kylie wrestling heel. Started flipping over to that heel kind of thing. I actually, like, it was odd, but it was also very cool. Because it showed the diversity of both of these women. Um, mm. Aesthetically speaking, um, I, I thought it was adorable that they looked like they were pretty much wearing the same gear. Just different versions of it. <laughs> tag team, future tag team, right there. Could well, Ky Kylie did connect. It, hers was like almost a full one piece, but there was some opening. But yeah, if you look at the picture here, though, it's like 
Yeah, it's pretty identical. <laughs> yeah, no, what I meant with, with color is oh, what like I meant with it. Oh, color. yeah, the color, yeah. The blue and the pink, they were both wearing blue and pink. It's just Zoe was wearing the more kind of, I don't want to say hot, said like the brighter kind of more vibrant variation of it. Whereas Kylie was wearing a little bit more of a pastelish mm -hmm. kind of muted variation. Um, oh, actually, I would just actually say almost like a watercolor because it, it was very blended mm -hmm. and kind of blended into each other. Whereas Zoe's was very clear. This is the end of the blue line. This is the end of the pink line kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, it worked. It worked really, really nicely together. And again, if, they, if Kylie comes back, they want to have a tag team. They've already got the outfits for it. Um, yeah, let's take it into the after aftermath because it was glorious chaos. So Zoe offers a handshake, and Kylie doesn't slaps it away a second, but then they end up hugging. But this is where Ryder mm -hmm. die attack them, toss them mm -hmm. out. Reed Matthew runs out to stop anybody from fighting. Uh, TFA says, uh, "You like that lame ass shit?" And then she calls Kylie a loser. I uh, didn't really like that too much. So we move right into the. LPW Tag Team Championships. Mm -hmm. It is R mm -hmm. the champions, Ride or Die, TFA, and Steven Crow taking on. Uh, I don't know if I want to actually say what I called them in my notes, but. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Dean Richter and the Mexican Devil, El Asesino. Oh, you know what I called them. Oh, because isn't that what I called <laughs> We were joking about it at the table, but I'm not going to say that. So Ride or Die attacked them on the stage. They fight into the crowd. Uh, Ride or Die slam, slamming them, in, uh, D Dean and uh, As Asesino, into each other right behind us up in the VIP area. TFA ends up mm -hmm. backdropping Asesino right behind us um, mm -hmm. on the like on, in the VIP area. Uh, they end back in the ring. Uh, Crow gets a meteor off the top to Asesino for two. Again, uh, Asesino fighting back. It's a huge Death Valley driver to Crow for uh, to Crow look really good. Um, TFA hits a uh, Asino hits TFA with a Zach driver at one point, or the mm -hmm. Mishinoka driver, if you want to be basic. Uh, that is a legend, sir. It's the Zach driver. Yeah. No, no. Michino Taka Michinoku is a legend. And, How dare you? And he gave it to Zach, and Zach renamed it the Zach Driver. So it is now officially the Zach Driver. Mm. You know, we're going to have to have a discussion about uh, what we think about wrestlers' names being involved in certain moves because that's some stuff. Anyway, continue, continue. Uh, Driver so thing. Solid punches by Crow to Dean up top, but Dean catches them with a choke bomb off the top for do uh crow slips out of the seismic driver which is the burning hammer and he hits a face buster to dean on he gets unloads with kicks crow uh and crow gets a poison rana to dean uh again real I, I thought good match throughout uh dean gets a super kick and hesitation drop kick to tfa but crow mm -hmm. breaks up the pin and yeets him out of the ring here Faye reverses a german hits one of her own uh, Dean ends up stopping the gory special. Hits his rolling elbow. Uh, him and Asesino double team, but TFA up kicks Dean and Ride or Die double team uh, them. And TFA rips the mask off of Al Asesino, effectively taking him out of the match. TFA then gets a big old spine buster to Dean and hits the Pimp Juice DDT. And Crow hits good, bad, and the ugly. And TFA gets the pin. And the win on Dean Richter. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts that you want to say before I get into it? Yeah, I, I thought good match. I, I, I'm, a, I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of LS. You know, every time I watch them, um, mm -hmm. ride or die. I made my opinion known in the past. Uh, I, I thought they did a good job in this match. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody worked together really well. I, I still don't like the team myself personally, but mm -hmm. uh, I think that they did a good job. They all four people in this match did a really good job together in 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 ring. Mm -hmm. I have to agree. Um, this is something that you know if you if you've listened to Chop Talks in the past, this is something that I've talked about a lot, specifically with Dean. He needs to stop pulling his shit. Mm -hmm. It's. I love Dean Richter. 
he is a great example of NJPW strong style. He wrestles in a very strong style way. And his character work on the last year has been whew, tremendous. Like, he used to be that quiet, non engaging, just guy who would just come in, do his thing, and go. Now we're starting to see personality. He's starting to sass talk people. He's very much a heel wherever he goes. So he's kind of like using that to his advantage. But God freakity, frack, frick, frick, and does he pull his shit? And it's not even consistently. It, it's against certain people. And it's, I get that you have to. There's going to be certain situations where you are going to have to. What I'd like to see is him work on making it still look like he's not pulling it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, there are a lot of guys locally that, that we can mention who look like they really lay their shit in, but you know that it's probably like 60%. You know, mm. they're just that good and experienced. I would Andy. like to see Dean get, yeah, Andy Anderson, phenomenal like that. Bobby Sharp, another great example. Sean Martins. Great exam. Kind of I realized positive. I really didn't change the graphic for the whole talk about the match. <laughs> well, shit. Well, here we are. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people who locally you can see do this, and I'm sure there's a ton of people like like I said, clandestine society has really been working on that character work. We've seen it come out of Dean Richter. I would like to see them work on that. Otherwise, that's the only thing I got to say. This is so yeah. good. Yeah. And again, um, I've also the mask part was a little confusing for me too, though. There was a little yeah. bit of awkwardness removing the mask. It actually at one point looked like Assassino removed the mask himself. Yeah, so, but it was awkward. Yeah, it that was the only other thing. Otherwise, solid match. Yeah. And again, I think mm -hmm. Dean, like we watch him in RCW and his character work at some of these shows. When he's fighting with the lighting people, when he's fighting with us, because we're yeah. cheering him and he's getting mad at us, and he goes to the other side and they're booing him, and he's like, finally, he comes back to us, expecting us to boo him, and then we cheer him. It's just his reaction. When, when at the show at Kingsway, when uh, the production guys screwed up the music and he went at, he went yelling, and it's it's these like eighteen year old kids that are running music, and he runs over, starts yelling at them, and it's just it's just absolute perfection. That just, it is. Oh, uh, I mean, those production kids do need to be yelled at because how hard is it to push a fucking button? But, um, yeah, RCW is also another place where I have noticed that certain people he does pull his shit, though. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that. I saw that match with him and, and Kat Von Hees. And, like, Kat is not shy. Like, there's been a lot of people in this province who have complained about how stiff she is, but she's trained with the big boys. She's not afraid to tussle with people like Assassino, like Dean Richter. So like, yeah, that's something I would like to, for him see improved. A power. More power. Yeah. More yeah. power. More power. More, more power. We move on. Main event of the evening is the LPW Grand Championship. It is Lumberjack. Larry was defending against Jack Pride and the Crimson Lion, Mars the Specialist. Again, so much happened in this. I'm going to give a couple highlights, but I, there's so much. Go, mm -hmm. you got to go to the uh, IWTV and watch this match. Mm -hmm. It is incredible. It's like ten bucks. Sign up. You get so many promotions there. I it, it's worth it to watch this match. I really, really, really recommend going over there and watching this because mm -hmm. damn, were these two good? Um, there's a spot early where Pride just hits his pounce, sending Larry flying across the ring. Looked mm -hmm. really good. Uh, there's another spot. Larry and Mars Larry at each other down, and they both get right back up, and they're both like getting up as um. Uh, Pride hits the double moon. Like, if you think of uh, Johnny TV, his old moonlight yeah. drive, hits a double moonlight drive. I'm like, oh, looks so good. So good. There's just <laughs> so many good spots in this, man. Um, it just, it's, it's just, 
uh, Pride with the cross face strikes to Larry. He's just got him on his knees, just hitting him, but ends up missing the stomp. And Larry comes back with a huge side effect. Just it just keeps it just everything was so good. Mar mm -hmm. Mars getting a gill a standing guillotine to Larry, but Pride comes off the top and he, he, they follow the mat. And Pride off the top of the stomp to Larry to break the hole, but he only gets two. He, when he pins Larry, it just everything was just so good. Um, mm -hmm. Pride ends up missing that corner, uh, low cross body, and Larry ends up uh, hits hits him with an a, Alabama slam. Uh, just Mars sends him out, hits a Fosbury flop to both guys on the floor. It was crazy looking. Uh, just uh, the, we get the old seven wheelbarrow face buster stomp combo, and Mars <laughs> Mars did not like that because he was just trying to go for his wheelbarrow face buster and probably team with the stomp, and Mars was very disappointed about that, and they brawled again. It was just crazy. Um, it just Thad gets involved at one point, uh, and, and it just it just just nothing but crazy throughout this match, and it was just. So good, man. There's so mm -hmm. much crazy stuff. Um, so Larry, I'll go. I'm just gonna go to the to the Ars end here. Larry and Pride are trading strikes. They trade super kicks. Pride hits a, a claymore running kick. Uh, Pride gets the dragon sleeper to Larry, but Larry holds on, flips Pride through into the sob maker that gets reversed into a code breaker. Uh, Pride goes to the top, but Larry cuts him off with a super flapjack off the top. It was crazy. Larry mm -hmm. misses the saw line. Mars comes in, hits Pride with a TKO, then hits Larry with the TKO and gets the one, the two, and the three. Your new LPW Grand Champion is Mars the Specialist off his cash in of last month. Oh, holy crap, this was, it was so good. It was so good. So let's talk about the match before we get into all the post-match mm -hmm. stuff here. It, this match was freaking incredible. This was the right place for this match, obviously. Championship, main championship of this company. But the stories going into it, I was a little concerned because there seemed to be, like, just so much crossing going over. We got the feud between Mars and, and Pride. We had the, you know, com competitor understanding i think between larry and mars and we had the conflict between larry and pride it was it was such a perfect trifecta of a story that was told without being overwhelming overdone or confusing each kind of story had its place throughout the match and i felt that each story got enough time to kind of shine in its moment. I didn't feel um, that anything between like the, the story going on between Mars and Pride, it didn't take away from Larry. The story going on between Mars and Larry didn't take away from Pride and, and so on and so forth. It was just such a well-organized match. Uh, we did see the crossbody from Pride eventually though, didn't we? I feel like we did. Yeah. So it's, that, yeah. it's in my brain. <laughs> Again, this match was just incredible. Like just yeah. from bell to bell, so this just didn't stop. It's like two guys would be in, then three guys would be in, then two guys would be in, then three guys. Would be in, it just never stopped. This just mm -hmm, match mm -hmm. kept going and going, and I, I, I loved it. I thought these, mm -hmm. like this, these last two shows have been just. I, I, I was critical of a couple shows ago, uh, due to some length on some stuff. In these well, last some two. of them were excessive to the point of exhaustion, and it's like, what is there left for the rest of the show when those kind of exhausting matches are happening in the middle of the shows? Yeah, and this one, this show, I felt paced itself very well. You got that mm -hmm. twenty minute draw; nothing else came quite to the length until you get to the main event, and it's mm -hmm. just incredible. So, post match, want to get into that? Yes, yes. So yeah. Uh, Larry, Larry ends up taking the belt from Fitzy because Fitzy's going to give it to Mars. And you're mm -hmm. thinking, what the hell? And then Larry ends up giving the belt to Mars, gives him a hug. Mars asks mm -hmm. for the tip touch before Larry leaves. Larry's like, and, do and does the tip touch. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was nice. A sweet. A little sweet moment, for sure. Yeah, so Larry takes off. Uh, Pride's still in the ring. He's pissed. So Mars Pulls Pride up, offers him the handshake. Pride won't do it, but then 
Jack hugs Mars. You know it's Jack because Pride don't hug people. And then Pride drag them, and then Pride drags his ass out of there. Um, I think that was Jack coming through for just a second for that hug. I, I really do think we'll, Jack. We'll gonna... discuss what I think about that after. Yeah. Um. So as Mars is leaving. Uh, Pride comes th- like swings a chair through his 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 chair. You see that chair. picture <laughs> through the curtain. Hitting Mars in the back, like it came through the curtain with with him behind the curtain. It was great. It's a great mm-hmm. spot. Beats the hell out of him. Thad trying to pull Pride off of Mars because he's like, "This is too far." Uh, Pride mm-hmm. ends up like taking the chair and smashes him down, like setting the chair Don't into his smile, yeah, yeah, into the throat, and then hits the stomp to him onto the chair. Uh, mm-hmm. The locker room, led by Thickness, comes out. The, the rads are there. Everybody's coming up to the tape. Pride runs away. He starts yelling, you're in, ungrateful. You don't deserve it. He's, he's standing on top, pretty much on top of the announcer announcing table. Mm-hmm. And he's just yelling at Pride er, at Mars in the ring, calling him mm-hmm. ungrateful and, and doesn't deserve it. It's supposed to be his time. And Mars says he wants Pride for his first defense of the championship next month at LPW 29. I got the graphic right here. Yes, yes. Thank you to Spencer Love for sending me all these graphics. The, the good, I call it graphics. But yeah, we're getting this LPW Grand Championship. That's going to be insane. I like that color combo of the maroon and the yellow. It's mm-hmm. very nice. Me too. Um, this is why I don't think that it was Jack. Hugging Mars. I think it was a ruse. I don't think it was Jack. I think it was Pride the whole time. He was just like playing face, waiting for him. Because he knew he was going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think based on the announcements. Because, you know, before he was always Jack Pride. Mm -hmm. This match, he was not announced as Jack Pride. He he was just Pride. I think um, for now. And I think maybe for the betterment of the character. A Jack is going to be um, a little nuance in, in a Jiminy Cricket, if you will, at the back of Pride's mind that he has to smack once in a while to shut up. Um, yeah. I think that we're going to see the more diabolical side of Pride coming up, and I'm so happy for it because I, you know I love, I know not everyone does, but I love the clear definition of heel and face. And we see this most particularly in in. New Japan, House of Torture, Stardom, um, Oedo Tai, or former, the artists formerly known as Oedo Tai. More on that on hate. Japanese Wrestling Update. <laughs> All the hate. All um, the hate, baby. All the hate. Yeah. I yeah. I thought initially when I first started coming to LPW that that's what Seven kind of was. And they kind of began to feel very Los Ingubernables esque where they were mm. kind of like walking that line and they would deviate to one side or the other. Sometimes they're facey, sometimes they're healy, blah, 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 blah. I would like to see this be like a, a very solid like seven and the seven going forward. We're baddies. We don't like people. We don't play nice with others. I, I'm hopeful. I know we kind of got that in clandestine, but I feel like that's a different kind of Hmm. Eel that we we have to deal with there, and it, it, I feel with this formation of the short kings as well that that's hmm. going to be kind of a little micro faction within itself. Yes, what the fuck, I mean, Pinky Wowzers? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel, and again, this is not a sla- uh, uh, to slander uh, clandestine, but they are to me the house of torture. Of it all, where they they use they use cheat, and again, not in a bad way. They're they're house torture in a good way, in the fact that they use the cheat they they use cheating a lot to to towards their success and towards their failures in the past. That cheating mm-hmm. has created mm-hmm. failures for them in big matches. Uh, that is losing, true. Look at show. Well, look at Blaze losing the title, um, losing the grand championship. There's, so they like, so you have. I, I see the parallels more if, if you're looking at NGW for for clandestine there. Where yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I I've seen Seven as very much an Lij over this last while, in that they can be bad guys, mm-hmm. but they're also just this weird dynamic of because they're very over with the crowd, especially yeah. Pride. 
So yeah, I'd like to, so maybe the better comparison would be oh, oh, the artists formerly known as Oedo Tai. I would like to see Seven kind of do that because they're unapologetically bad, but again, their shenanigans are a bit more yeah. Right now, Seven is two people, but... <laughs> I mean, and arguably only one. Because that's like that's not to take away anything from that, but he is the manager. He's not well, he's Pride's great. partner. Yeah, but he's not his partner. He's not his wrestling partner. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, <clears throat> We could maybe use the glue back. Yeah, maybe you can start healing your faction if you bring the glue back. TJ Cannon. I can't believe I want <laughs> TJ Cannon back in Alberta wrestling. I I can't I believe mean, I thought I'd ever say that in my life, but I do. Oh, we man. want Cannon. What what is yeah. his name out in Winnipeg now? Young Gun. The Young Gun, TJ Cannon. We want the Young Gun. Bring back Cannon. Hashtag fix his especially face. With that, especially with that new gear he's rocking, man. It looks really yeah. good. Yeah. But the the shorts are very Buddy Murphy to be like with the cuts in them and stuff. Mm. Now that we've gone off topic, off the rails, yeah. if you will. Shut out. So this this is your main event for next month, but yes. but but in the interim. Before we get to the end of August, mid-August, August 17th, uh, ten day, or seven days after my birthday, we're going to West Edmonton Mall, ladies and gentlemen, for the West Edmonton Brawl, featuring a meet and greet with former WWE champion Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam. Um, I can't, I'll hit my microphone. I'm looking forward to seeing this show. Uh, I know Nathan is super excited to meet Rob Van Dam because Ron Dan Dam's one of his favorite wrestlers of all time. So I think I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to see this. This is going to be happening at the Ice Palace in the center of West Edmonton Mall. I'm super excited. I'm getting I'm getting tickets with Nathan. I'm super I'm super I'm super excited to see this. Like I. I think it's gonna be a blast, like going to the show. So mm -hmm. I got I got graphics for all the for the five matches that Spencer sent me graphics for. So we have a scramble championship match. Eli Serge defending his brand new title against Ooh. his against his teammates, his stable mates of the Canadian Goose and the Wolf by Will Manta, uh, and against the entirety of the Reds. Yeah, that's a very old picture of Larry, though. Yeah, we could do for some, hello, we could do for some updated graphics, but there's a lot of people here that I think also need updated graphics, so. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got some updated graphics for Larry. <laughs> I'm using my thumbnails, but yeah, <laughs> uh, so we get a scramble championship at match at this show. I think that's going to be fire. Rads versus. That's going to be a hard match for us to cheer for, though, because we love Eli, we, I love Goose. I love Wolf Boy. His content is just so great. If you guys aren't following Wolf Boy, please go follow Wolf Boy. His content is so amazing and wholesome. Mm -hmm. But then you got the Rads. I mean, Team Rads. What the fizzity yuck? Mm -hmm. It's going to be crazy seeing this six oh. Like It's going to be crazy. Just crazy. Then we have a tag team match. It's Para Lira taking on the Voros Twins. I'm sorry. I love me some B Rock Granny. I have a spaceman shirt somewhere in my in, in my house. That picture does not flatter him well. So I have a, one of my best friends, Michelle. She's not a wrestling fan, thanks to Danny Duggan. Uh, um, we're not going to talk about why, but um, she's not a wrestling fan. But that being said, she saw this graphic and she sent this to me, and she's like, "These motherfuckers." Yeah, they, they she are. She hates the Boros twins. They are she huge. hates them. They are I huge know. on Insta and TikTok and everything. Just remember, That's they why are. She hates them. They are not. Just remember, they are not the Island Boys. They aren't. They are not. No. Oh, oh. Why did that? Now it's in my head. Why? That's, whole th That's the whole thing with them. Is they keep saying we are not them. Boy. <laughs> and they keep saying they're. That's their gimmick. Because they say they are not them. That is part of their gimmick. Well, I mean, I don't even think they're the right race. Aren't the Island Boys black? I, I know. It's just that it's an internet joke from all the TikToks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it because well, they're twins? Yeah. Well, very much so. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's okay. a twin thing, and then keep making jokes. And there's some stuff that people say about the other boys. That's why they make jokes that they're not. Um, so, yeah. We move mm -hmm. on 
to a singles match. It is Pride versus Artemis Spencer. I can't wait to see this. This match is going to yeah. be insane. Yeah. I wonder, uh, is, is that, do we think that is going to be in Pride's corner? I assume oh, so. Oh, 100, 100%. You, yeah, that never misses it. It's stupid a, for him to miss this show. That never misses an opportunity to make himself look important. Come on. Come on. Oh, for God. Um, yeah, no, this is going to be freaking awesome. Okay. Okay, I'm yeah. sold. That I'm, I'll go. I'll go. Sit ringside with me? Yeah. Just Probably see the so. whole damn show. Yeah. Uh, then we have a oh, tri women's geez. triple threat match. It is G. It's an elimination triple threat match, too. It is G. Oh. G G Ray taking on Nicole Matthews. There you go. There you go. Millwoods. MW Millwoods. There you go. Taking on Nicole Matthews. Taking on Jasmine Allure. This match is gonna be so good. Ah, I remember. Um, I think I saw Jasmine Allure the first time in LPW before. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Yeah, this will be great. Especially when you throw Nicole Matthews in there. We saw that last match with her and Mike. Bailey, holy hot damn, and then the tag match with Artemis. Woo. And Gigi yeah. is just money. money. Where she goes. Didn't she just recently face Chennai Kai? Yeah, uh, she was she was on uh, the MLW pay-per-view there. Uh yeah. Blood, Blood and Thunder. So yeah. Get it, yeah. girl. And then the final match announced for the show. It is a all an all-star trios match. It is the clandestine society, Michael Richard Blaze, TFA, and Stephen Crow taking on the intangible short kings. Love of it. Zoe Sager, the thickness Reed Matthews, and your new LPW grand champion, Mars the Specialist. I I think this is gonna be a great tri uh, trios match, man. This is gonna be good. Is that like every major title in this company on one match? Except the scramble title, yes. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll see which it's... championship reigns supreme on that one. Maybe Zoe in Thickness uh, may have to go after those tag titles. I won't be mad. Get get down I won't with be the mad about that. You can get down with the intangible thickness. I, th I I did not. Okay, I'm happy you added the thickness at the end there because I was like, please don't say get down with the intangible. <laughs> That's just gonna sound silly. Get also, down with the intangible. Get up, come on, get down with intangible. Well, no, I was thinking more of a get up, <laughs> come on, get down with the sick. Like get down with the sickness, the song from down with like uh, down with the sickness. I was thinking, come on, get up, get down with the intangible thickness. Come on. <laughs> A lot of lot of syllables in there. <laughs> yeah, oh, very much so. Very much so. But we have come to the end of this review of LPW 28. Feeling hella good. I'm excited mm -hmm. for West Edmonton Mall. I'm excited for August 30th. So much great stuff coming from LPW. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 You see, I was quoting Emperor's New Groove. I don't know what you were doing. I was just being weird. You can find me on the X at that candy guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that candidate. You can find me on Facebook at Andre M. Melba Wrestling Talk. You can also find me over in the comment section over on Bam Weekly, which will be changing names fairly soon. So go go join the page, Bam Weekly. We'll we'll be updating everything at once we have the switch over. But I know it's coming because we're we're in the we're in the we're, we're hearing things. So stuff's coming from Man Weekly, coming soon. There's there's lots of stuff coming soon. So check them out over on Facebook. You can also find me over on the Twitch at uh, and the YouTube at our local establishment. Check uh, check us out. I'll be here there. I guess the show comes out on Wednesday. But there tonight uh, for Marvel Talk as we review... Uh, we're going to review Hall H, the Marvel Hall H panel from Comic-Con where they announced that bunch of stuff having to do with the mcu i'm excited there might be a little bit of doomsday in there and if you know what i'm talking about it has nothing to do with superman because that's in the other one uh but yeah there there is a lot a lot of big news coming out of that weekend uh we just did a review this past weekend of deadpool and wolverine it started with me ed mark talks wrestling and rich king 
And eventually Ed had to tap out due to some being having a little bit of illness. And it ended up being me, me, Mark, and Rich from majority of the show. But we t- we broke it all down. We loved on it. It was like an hour and 45 minutes of us just loving on this awesome movie. Almost as long as the movie itself. Uh, so go check that out over on the YouTube if you have seen the movie. And if you don't, if you haven't, go see it anyways. Uh, and if you want to be, if, you, if you're down to being spoiled, so. And one more shout out to our boy Mike the Rap over at Backbreaker Video. Want to thank him so much for simulcasting all of our stuff over there. If you want to catch him live, go to twitch.tv slash Mike the Rap every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday. He does his AW watch alongs uh, and every other day of the week. He's playing video games over there and just gaming it up, t- chatting with you while he's gaming for hours and upon hours upon hours on end. So go hang out with him over there on the Twitch. Give him a follow. Uh, I'll give it and yeah, do that. It, or if you want, if you want to see replays, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming. Bring your main content from him, Mr. PJC, this guy, Mr. Rick Jules, that guy, little guy right there. And their frequent kiss. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Bubble, where can they find you? If you want to follow a mobile, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Mobile. You can follow her on everything else. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming, Japanese Wrestling Update, every Friday with this guy at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media. This week, we are going to be live because we don't have any wrestling going on in Edmonton. On a Friday night this weekend. So odd. Um, but we have lots to talk about. Lots to talk about, you guys. So stay tuned to our socials when that is coming out. What else? What else? What else? Well, you can also find me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We are going to be putting out an episode this week, hopefully, being that schedules align because Astro just got a new job. She got a promotion. Shout out to the beautiful Astrid on that promotion. We love you, girl. I'll wait. <laughs> we got a half her there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we should have a show coming out this Friday. Um, I believe it will be 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so 6 p.m. Mountain Time. No, no. Unless it's not. No, no. Other way. 2, 2, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. on time. Unless it's not. We will let you know. Stay tuned to our socials to let, and we'll let you know about that. If you're wanting to watch an LPW show live, you can go to there, or we will leave a link in the description box below. It is our website, www.lovewrestling.ca, where you can get a link to their ticket sales and any ticket for any other events that they have going on there. You can also find a link to the Clandestine Society School. <laughs> yeah, to the clandestine wrestling society.com. If you're wanting to learn to be a wrestler, a manager, and I also assume a referee, they have some pretty great refs in Ben Uman and Fitzpatrick there. I, I think, I hope anyway. <laughs> Give them an email, find out if they are there if you're wanting to take that route in professional wrestling. If you're also wanting to watch OPW online, we will leave the link in the description box. It is independentwrestling.tv. How much is it, Andre? It is ten. Ten. Ten dollars, I think, American. I don't know. Somewhere around there, anyways. Which would probably work out to about twelve Canadian. Hmm. At least it's tracks her. It does. I am no better than a man. Uh, <laughs> 10 Canadian shout out Sean Spears still a great price to watch some amazing professional wrestling because there's a lot of wrestling on there isn't there my friend a lot. there is so many different promotions I highly recommend so checking many out promotions. TV. for only $10 12 Canadian highly recommend you guys Yep. Andre my trusted friend and colleague do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people I just want to say thank you all so very much. We really do appreciate all the support as we've been growing and growing. We're coming to jump on 200 subscribers to the channel. So thank you so very much. We really appreciate all the support. Uh, the last few video, uh, that Mario video just exploded. And same with that uh, day one, two of the G1 Climax. Thank you so very much for all that support. So uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Please uh, 
uh, share us out to all your friends, family, and just the crazy, wild, and crazy guys that exist in this world. And don't forget to share us out to all your friends. Or don't forget to to uh, uh, hit that notification bell so we alerted if we never drop a new video. Ding dong. Hallelujah. Is that how the inside of your brain is sounding right now, my friend? No, it just means I'm a wild and crazy. I'm a wild and crazy guy. You sounded like the jungle kid from freaking what? What was that show? Do you remember the one I'm talking about? Wild Thornberries. Do you remember that show? No. They adopted a jungle boy who was voiced by Flea from uh, I, I the Red know the, the Peppers. I know the show. I just never watched it. It was, it was not one that interested me. Oh, highly recommend. Anyway, that being said, Andre, <laughs> we should get out of here. I am your Malbo. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mwah.